Good day, fellow adventurers. Might I say you're all looking rugged today. I'm glad to have you back. The show's been so boring without you. Come in, do your stretches. We'll be starting soon. Welcome to Dresden's Tale, episode 57. This is season 3, volume 3, chapter 53 in our wild tale. This is high military fantasy, the kind that needs heroes. Ours is Dresden Fane, a dwarf, a warlock, a rambler, and a rocker. He's a warrior of the Stone Clan, cruising his way across a vast sea of possibilities. I'm Lewis Nichols, your servant, your subject, your bringer of humble offerings, etc., etc. I'm the guy who wrote this crazy thing, a project spanning two decades and a whole cartload of Word documents. Thanks to YouTube, I now have a reasonable way to pass it on to you. Hey, do you guys remember back when we used to talk about things vital to Dresden's tale in the intros and outros? I haven't been doing that much, so make sure you tell me in the comments if there's anything you need to know. As a general rule, if I've named something, I've put some thought into it. I know all kinds of things. Just ask. I'm happy to let, let go of my secrets. You remember the Baldab Pony? That's the most common horse of the Kelds. There are a few others, too. They're breeding war horses on the plain of Balestrand, and the hardy equines of Manelia make pretty good draft horses. You've got lizard speeds to compete with them. They're slower, but they're tougher, and they taste like chicken. I'll throw in another quick factoid as we're closing in on Dresden's position. If you're wondering about money, and we've talked about it quite a bit, but this is worth mentioning. In the clans, there are no personal possessions as we understand them. The chief sits above man at the bottom of the divine hierarchy. He also owns everything in the clan. Well, except for people. You can't own souls. This socialism gone wild thing doesn't mean there's no social classes, though. You can possess property in the name of the chief. What you can have is decided on your ability to defend it. You can challenge for just about anything you can use. If you want someone's wagon, you can fight him for it. And no, it's not madness or Sparta. There is some organization to it. Now, I see Dresden over the horizon, so I'm not going to get into the details just at this moment. Like I said, there are a lot of videos on economics on this channel. Hey, speaking of wagons, there he is. It's time to get started. About two weeks have passed since the last chapter. Keld weeks, that is. They're only five days long. It's Ursa's last day, 2,052 years after the fall. Tribulations 7. A builder will come, and the way will open. I have no idea what time it is, Ralph complained. I'm tired. Should I be tired? Have I mentioned how much I hate this place? No sense of order. Liz looked at him for a moment. It's midday, I think. Hers is end for sure. And since when did you care about order? A little dust devil swirled nearby in an otherwise bleak landscape. The farther they traveled, the closer both Heliot and Keto's tracks seemed to come and the more the wind seemed to blow. Donald was out to her right, trying to keep an eye out on the horizon. It had become clear the Aquirtus vision was one of the least affected by Vool's harsh light. He was the one who noticed all the local animal life, what little they'd seen, had some sort of natural covering for their eyes. Usually this came in the form of longer hair, but the indigenous lizards had a flap of skin hanging over their eyes. Donald wore a wide-brim hat, woven from dried grass. I'm not sure. It could be Oots first. What is that? He pointed at what could have been a forest. But, for the last day, they hadn't seen a hint of moisture. What? Dresden roused, his hand going for his blade. Easy, killer. It's a... Uh, it's a grove, Ralph told him. They were alone on the road, but pulled off to the side anyway, Dresden insisted. The trees, if they could be called that, were more like stony spires. Most of them ranged from 10 to 15 feet tall. Cormac, what do you make of it? Dresden engaged their new companion. The human Gaelic fought with them once or twice. Well, once, against the Iterian baggage train. Then he opted to stick around. 
as they had a general plan to make for Brave Rock. He reflexively pushed his hair up out of his eyes, then shook his head to knock it back down. No idea. The trees were a crystalline mix of greens and reds, looking something like rose quartz in texture. The ground was littered with thumbnail-sized flakes of stone that crunched as one walked over them. Pinecone-shaped nodules, a little larger than a dwarf's fist, were scattered among them. As Dresden penetrated into the grove, he was warned off by a low growl. This time, the sword made it out of its sheath. A four-legged, lumbering, living stone behemoth regarded him. Its head bobbed, as if trying to impress the fact the ridge of darker stone across its brow was more than just a sunshade. Dresden thought it could have probably knocked down a sizable tower without much effort. The creature looked left and right, taking a survey, then growled again. It advanced a step, placing itself between the strangers and his herd. It was only then Dresden noticed the ten or more smaller quadrupeds grazing on the fallen nodules. Two others let out long rumbles, perhaps asking if assistance was required. Dresden backed off. They not be likely to charge, a woman with skin a shade darker than Cormac's grinned. But I can't rule it out. Dresden moved back even farther, and the herd's champion did the same. What are they called? You people just call them rumblers. They were Ijuk before we were told not to use our words. Donald spoke up. She was telling us the town of Opal is just ahead. Liz, what are you doing? I want to pet the rumbler. She moved steadily towards the beast who turned back to face her. Dresden sighed. She hasn't killed anything for a week. She's bored. Rock, try not to get trampled to death. Ralph yelled at her. Look! He tossed a stone to the dwarf. Dresden spotted the nodule at the last second, bobbled it from hand to hand before bouncing it off an elbow, and finally failed to kick it back up into his grasp. Ralph caught it in mid-flight and handed it carefully over to Dresden. They're opals, covered in that sandy gunk. The lithics eat the rocks and shit out the sand, which grows into more trees. Fascinating. Dresden mocked him and tossed the stone to the ground. Are they worth anything? They're enough to make a home in the little village up the road, but not enough to leave for a better one, the woman told him. What day is it? Dresden asked her. The woman shrugged. Time? Before you Campbells came, we didn't keep time. It's a past the time you guys start drinking but it's not yet time to when you go to your soft beds. See? Rawr! I should be tired, Ralph bragged. Liz, it was it all that you hoped it could be? It likes to be scratched on the neck. Feels like Dresden's bald head. By the way, we figured out what day it is? Dresden grunted. Let's go find this town. He didn't bother getting back up on the wagon, but just started walking, lost in his own thoughts. It didn't make any sense. The troop followed him around the way they did. Liz was a stronger fighter, but she refused to take command or forge a new group of her own. Some people are just made to lead. I'm not one of them, she had told him. Ralph no longer acknowledged he ever joined the clan, so he was out. At the suggestion of Donald, they all laughed, including the Equerta. Grace thought she was too new for the group, though after their time in Lassiter, and almost two weeks in the desert, she was practically a veteran. Maybe Cormac would work out. Dresden was tired of it, weary of all the decisions. The first structure on the road into Opal was a pen full of shuffling undead with a small temple of Ogs adjacent. The holy building was single level, perhaps 5,000 square feet. Dresden figured the wood was imported, but it didn't look Tarikian. It did look bleached and dingy, like it got blasted by the sand piled up its windward sides. Bleak or not, it was impressive for a town whose population might have been counted in the hundreds. This is my kind of place. Cormac looked over the rotting corpses. Most of them were fresh, the stinking bones not yet free of clinging flesh. There were ravens and small carrion-gorged lizards. Behind the organized property, there was a burial pile and a pile of corpses, dead Iterians waiting for animation. 
randomly scattered around the grounds were a dozen or more poles supporting dead or dying heretics. Ah, bugs! Ralph jumped from the wagon and grabbed a lizard. That's been crawling on dead people, Liz yelled at him. Do you mind? He looked up at a dead eye tearing impaled on a pole. We're good. He looked her in the eye as he crunched. I'm going to check in, Cormac told him. Might sign up if they've got anything going on. Dresden waved him off. So much for a potential commander. Past the temple were tents, a lot of them. Looking over the pennants, Dresden guessed there were five groups, perhaps as many as 5,000 warriors. There were some activity, but not much. The night guard, he guessed. To the right of the road, a number of shops occupied a row. Each was built around one or more wagons and unique in their own ways. A tent vendor, a metalsmith, a leather worker, all the shops were closed. A shrine of Samtha anchored the end of the row. Water, Ralph pointed out. Three men with pikes stood under a tarp, watching over the well. Is there going to be a charge? Donald asked. You look to be Stone Plan, the Tagara matched his Southie draw. This is an EA operation. Water's free. Camp's free. As long as you register. All right. They moved the horses forward and got them drinking. Liz dunked her head in the trough and let out a happy sigh. Oh, now the important question, Ralph squawked. What time is it? The three warriors laughed. Around about an hour to midnight, I reckon. Tomorrow's the first. Oots? Liz smacked Ralph in the chest. Of course, Oots. We didn't lose a whole month. What's the story around here? The Tagara took a second to answer, but between Dresden and Donald, Liz was used to it. Sandstone and sandstorms. Quarry pits just past the native squats there. Someday this place is just going to be one big hole in the ground. They send it back to Roth and some other towns in the node. Good trade on those trees, too. They get some quality opals off them from time to time. Not that they're really opals. Some sage type said you need water for opals. He threw a real fit, but we can still call them opals. Even the town's opal. The name of it, I mean. Right now, this is the closest place to the Iterian base at Samer's Mesa. There's going to be a lot of fighting close by. Already has been some. We've been in some of it. Iterians have been pretty well pushed out of Roth, if you didn't know. We've got militia and some, uh, uh, what did you call them? Me? One of the guards turned. I call them menageries. It's mixed up clans and factions. Doesn't make any sense. Just warriors fighting together, trying to make a difference. Not much organization to this war. Bunch of partisans and sellswords. What about the militia of Biona? Donald asked. The Southie perked up. You them? A vanguard? Oh, I guess not. That sure would change things. I'd like to see him ride up, with or without the arrow. Barely even any organized paramilitias coming through. It's good for the Campbells. They want to do this all on their own anyway, the man with him interjected. So there's a pretty good Stone Clan compound. That's their palisade there. The River Dogs and the Plague Clans have a thing going on in the east. The Doomed are about a mile out where there's some grazing for their horses. It's pretty shitty here, but at least it's not the Campbells in charge. I could drop my pants right here and not get arrested. The Southie laughed, looking at Liz. Want to see? No, but I'm glad you have the option. Donald, why don't you set up camp? I'm taking Dresden to the compound, Liz instructed. Since when did you start taking charge? Dresden asked her. It's just Donald. Ah, what about us? Ralph had Grace by the hand. You're a grown-ass man. Do what you want. We're coming, Grace insisted. A brutish-looking minotaur stood as gatekeeper for the compound. The structure was a shoddy palisade reinforced with brick and stone. Dresden avoided thinking about the structural integrity. You're good, he passed Dresden on. There were advantages to having one's clan tattoo on the forehead. Liz showed off her shoulder, as did Grace. Ten bits for the Campbells, and no complaining about loose morals. 
I'm not that kind of Campbell. What about Iterian gold? Three shills. Is that a shill? She held out a thin coin less than an inch across. The guard nodded. Three shills is almost 30 bits. That's insane. You complaining already? No, she paid and followed her friends. What about you? The bulky man eyed Ralph. I'm with her. He held out four shills, but the guard didn't buy it. I, I didn't get my tat yet. No tat, no entry, the Minotaur growled. Some blue gin runs this place. He tells me what to do, and I do it. No exceptions. Liz pushed Dresden deeper in and gave Ralph a sarcastic wave. You can help Donald. This place is weird. She tried to get a feel for the compound. It was fully enclosed, but every room was at least a step up or down, most several. One room hosted an armory. Another was full of leather armor. Hey, I'm going with Ralph, Grace told her when she looked back. It's the first night off the trail. You understand. She looked at the guard. I don't suppose I, uh, uh, of course not. Liz watched her go with a shrug, then saw a topless brownie with a pierced nipple. Hey, where's the food and drink, sweetie? He gave them both a smile. Rations or the bar? The bar. And stop smiling at me that way. I might break you. He didn't stop. Back and to the right, down the steps and to the left. If you go down the hall, they've got a pool down there too, but it's pretty dirty. I can show you if you want. Easy, little one, Liz led Dresden to the bar. You're being very assertive, Dresden told her. They followed the sound of drums and came to a strange little subterranean space with climbable vents bringing light down from two brilliant columns. Dresden picked a spot deep in the shadows, glad to feel his eyes shift. Is that okay? I know you don't like talking to people. I'm just trying to help. I'm not in command here. She waved at the server and demanded, Cool ale. Well, it's not cool, but we have plenty. Liz accepted the offer and turned back to her friend. You're all we have here, Dresden. Even if we're all just friends, we still need somebody to make the decisions. You don't seem to mind making decisions. I guess. Dresden, I don't know if the gods give you some special guidance, but you always do the right thing. I would have taken us back to Roth after taking those wagons. A fight we might not have even won if it wasn't for you. Instead, we did what we needed to do at Lassiter. Debts paid, no loose ends. I would have probably kept us there, but that would have been a mistake. Huh, we just got here. Might be a mistake, too. Yeah, but I'm looking at a bale strand kitty swinging in the breeze. Dresden leaned forward to see what she was talking about and sat back to avoid staring at the naked Tagara. At least you'll be free to act like yourself here. Just don't talk about Pratter. Prater, and you've made that perfectly clear. Maybe you could find a lover here too. Maybe a couple. When I find someone and marry, it'll just be one. She looked at him with a smirk. I wasn't jumping all the way to marriage, but sure. Why, Dresden? It just seems like a lot of people I talk to are bothered by the idea of plural marriages. Who? Not Ralph. Not Dawn. Does Nanok have more than one wife? Dresden shrugged. He calls Fadal his primary. Then there's two others. Kids by all three. And another woman, too. It's a clusterfuck. Always spouses fighting and kids screaming. It's just not what I want. Papa. My dad's dad. He says it's all because the popes were immoral. Plural marriages weren't always normal. How old is he? Dresden looked embarrassed. Not as old as you might think. Everyone always says he's going to be hundreds of years old, but he's 120. That's pretty fucking old. I don't think my grand Mimi would be that old if she were still alive. He spent most of his life watching Patronsburg go to shit. He knows what doesn't work. I wouldn't question your papa, but, well, it doesn't bother me. Maybe warriors marrying warriors like equals, but that's because there's just no clear leader. I want my spouse to be in charge, and the bigger the family, the more successful he or she is going to be. So we all do better. 
Now, if I end up being the dominant, I'm damn sure going to be the dominant. Either way, I don't see being happy just rolling around the sheets with just one person, or even the same people the whole rest of my life. Ugh. For yourself, I mean, what really matters is what you think, but I think you're going to be something really special. I mean that. And it would just be a shame if you were held to just one wife, especially since you're probably not going to be home with her all that much. Dresden started his second glass. Probably won't be my choice anyway. Nanok will decide. We should probably go back and get some sleep. Tomorrow we'll be back to a normal day. First day in Opal. And we'll have a lot to figure out. Yes, boss. She made sure to grope the Tagara and slip him a few bits on the way out. All right, all right. We're doing it. Go to the sign off. You guys done? Calm down. Calm down. All right. Where were we? Uh, yeah. Liz. Sure is nice to find a friend like that. Great for the ego. Everyone deserves to be told they're special and destined for greatness. Do you think she's full of shit? Or is it true? Self-delusion? Or maybe she's the one with the prophetic vision? Seriously. His name's in the channel title, so you might suspect something will come of his career, eventually. But what about right now? Has he done anything worth being impressed with? I suppose I'm jaded. He's my project, and I want him to be that impossible mix of heroic, virtuous, edgy, and likable. Pretty sure I'm failing on all those accounts, but I'm closer to Grumpy. I'm, he's rude, he's prudish, and he's pretty judgmental. Oh well. We should remember, we are telling the tale of the bad guys. The Kelds would be the antagonists in almost any story, and right now, Dresden isn't anything more than thug number six in the credits, with his primary goal being to ascend to thug number one. Still, bad people have friends too. We like to think evil is lonely, but misery loves company. Hey, we have a subtitle for season four. Dresden's Tale, Volume 4, Misery Loves Company. Yeah, 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 don't think I won't. Now do the stuff. Like, subscribe, share. Like, subscribe, share. Leave a comment if you want to see this big hairy face. Visit my fiction on Amazon for Kindle. Leave a review. But most importantly, please remember, have a great day. Cheers. We'll see you next time.